Okay, my friends, welcome to episode 57B. We're still in Daniel chapter 4. Um, I, I had to cut it in half because it was so, so long. In this um, Daniel chapter 4, Nebuchadnezzar has had a second dream. He calls in all the wizards and Chaldeans and um, wise, wise men. They can't interpret the dream. Once again, he calls in Daniel. Daniel is interpreting the dream now. Tells him that the tree he dreamed about was him. It was so great and um, fed everybody and took care of everybody. Daniel chapter 4. We're starting at verse 23. And because the king beheld a watcher, even a holy one, coming down from the heavens, who was also saying, Chop the tree down, ruin it. However, leave its rootstock itself in the earth, but with a banding of iron and of copper among the grass of the field, and with the dew of the heavens. Let it become wet, and with the beast of the field, let its portion be until seven times themselves pass over it. This is the interpretation, O king, and the decree of the Most High is that which must befall my lord, the king. And you, they will be driven away from men. And with the beast of the field, your dwelling will come to be. And the vegetation is what they will give even to you to eat, just like bulls. And with the dew of the heavens, you yourself will be getting wet and seven times themselves will pass over you until you know that the Most High Ruler in the kingdom of mankind, the Most High God is ruler in the kingdom of mankind and to the one whom he wants, he gives it. So he's telling them until you acknowledge who God really is, God is your, your God, you will be like a beast. And because they said to leave the rootstock of the tree, your kingdom will be sure to you after you know that the heavens are ruling. So after the curse, he'll get his kingdom back. But first he must learn who and, and respect who God is. Therefore, O king, may my counsel seem good to you and remove your own sins by righteousness and, with, and your in, inequity by showing mercy to the poor ones, maybe there will occur a lengthening of your prosperity. All this befell Nebuchadnezzar the king. At the end of twelve lunar months, he happened to be walking upon the royal palace of Babylon. The king was answering and saying, Is it not this Babylon? Is not this Babylon the great that I myself have built for the royal house with the strength of my might? and for the dignity of my majesty. While the word was yet, he was bragging about everything he had done and accomplished. While the word was yet in the king's mouth, there was a voice that fell from the heavens. To you it is being said, O Nebuchadnezzar the king, the kingdom itself has gone away from you, and from mankind they are driving even you away. And with the beast of the field your dwelling will be. Vegetation they will give even to you to eat just like bulls. And seven times themselves will pass over you. Until you know that the Most High is ruler in the kingdom of mankind. And that the one whom he wants to, he gives it. So God told them, until you acknowledge me as God, you're going to be a beast and that, that time, it looks like seven times, I guess seven years. At that moment, the word itself was fulfilled upon Nebuchadnezzar, and from mankind he was being driven away. And vegetation he began to eat, just like bulls. And with the dew of the heavens, his own body got to be wet, until his very hair grew long, just like eagle's feathers, and his nails like bird's claws. Whoa. And at the end of the days, I, Nebuchadnezzar, lifted up to the heavens my eyes, and my own understanding began to return to me. And I blessed the Most High himself, and the one living to time indefinite, I praised and glorified. Because his rulership is a rulership to time indefinite, and his kingdom is for generation after generation. 
and all the inhabitants of the earth are being considered as merely nothing, and he is doing according to his own will among the army of the heavens and the inhabitants of the earth. And there exists no one that can check his hand or that can say to him, What have you been doing? So Nebuchadnezzar suffered for seven times uh, being an animal, eating grass, sleeping outside, getting wet, no, no one cutting his hair or his nails. And then all of a sudden he became so, he like woke up from the stupor and looked up to heaven and acknowledged God. And he tells him that there's no one like you and no one can question you. You are God. At the time, <clears throat> at the same time, my understanding itself began to return to me. And for the dignity of my kingdom, my majesty, and my brightness themselves began to return to me. And for me, even my high royal officers and my grandees began eagerly searching, and I was reestablished, reestablished upon my own kingdom, and greatness extraordinary was added to me. Now I, Nebuchadnezzar, am praising and exalting and glorifying the King of the heavens, because all his works are truth, and his ways are justice, because those who are walking in pride he is able to humiliate. That's the end of Daniel 4. <clears throat> um, I will get to the notes of Daniel 4 next week. Um, so it looks like Dan, uh, King Nebuchadnezzar was punished for being arrogant and uh, thinking that he was... Um, um, responsible for all the good that he was doing and that he did not thank God for all the gifts he had been given and he was uh, arrogant and prideful and uh, now after being punished he realized that God uh, provided all this and uh, appointed him king and let him have um, these opportunities and gifts and uh, and after that, his kingdom was restored to him, and he was became even greater. He was ruling the whole world, but apparently he became greater. Maybe the kingdom thrived. Anyway, um, I think it's important to thank God for all your gifts. Uh, uh, I thank God that I was born in America, that my mother was a good lady. Uh, my father was nice to me, um, at least for the first uh, eight eight years. Um, then, he, um, then he left, but it, he was nice to me while he was there at the house. And uh, so I'm very grateful, and I thank God every day. And I will thank God uh, every day that I'm alive. So I, I encourage you to... Uh, thank God as well, and don't think that um, don't take your gifts for granted. Um, I pray the the prayer of Jabez also, the Lord's prayer, the prayer of Jabez for the peace of Jerusalem, and uh, read the Revelations, trying to get more blessings. But I also pray the prayer of Jabez every day, um, asking God to bless me so I may bless others, and. Uh, to keep his hand upon me and bless, protect me and heal me and uh, bless my financial business um, endeavors and keep me from sinning against others and keep others from sinning against me. Uh, right now, um, what's going on in the news all day every day is uh, the Palestinians from Gaza, they call, is it, they're called Hamas, many of them have invaded Israel and um, massacred, I think, 1,300 civilians and taking uh, took a couple hundred prisoners, 120 to 200, something like that. And Israel right now is preparing to invade, but they're dropping notes and telling anybody that's innocent 
to flee to Egypt, uh, to go south. But they're going to track down to the ends of the earth every member of Hamas because um, they realize that they, they've they tried to be nice, try to deal with them, and they cannot deal with them. Hamas damaged their own, took out their own electricity to Gaza, shooting a rocket at Israel and hit their own electric plant. They, they um, um, cannibalized their own sewer system. Their sewers don't work because they took out the pipes to make weapons out of them. Their uh, only focus is to wipe, kill every Jew on the earth. I gotta go.